So let's talk about how we might implement the shortest dist node function. So we give it all the distances we've calculated so far for all the nodes that we could do that for. And so that's just a big pile here. There's, there's a bunch of nodes, and for each node we have some value. And a lot of these values are temporarily assigned. They may actually change later. But what we want to know is which of these we'd like to pull out the smallest value, and then we'd actually like to, to delete it from this, this set. So we don't have to worry about getting the same value over and over and over again. We wanna, next time we want to go in here, we want to get the next smallest. So how many different values might be in this blob? Well, there can be at most one for each node. There are probably less, there's probably lots of nodes that haven't been added in yet. But at worst, it's going to be big theta of n. The nodes that are in the graph may have distances associated with them. So to get the smallest distance in here, a natural thing to do is, is to loop through the list. So take all the distances that we actually have at the moment, just loop through them and pull out the minimum. Easy, big theta of n. And in fact, that's what I implemented here. So shortest dist node, you give it the mapping of distances, and it starts off with the best node undefined and, and best value something big. From probably really want something bigger than this. And for all the nodes that we have distances for, if the distance for that node is better than the best we've seen so far, reassign. And when you're done, just return the best node. So this is really quite straightforward. And uh, what is the running time that this leads to? All right, so these are some trickier run times than the ones I've suggested in the past. But we've got n nodes and m edges. And we want to know if we implement the Dijkstra algorithm, with looping through the list to find the smallest value, what is the running time that we get? So just make your selection. 